Hi there! Dry validation is the most popular gem from the whole collection of the dry libraries. There is no doubt about it. Validating data incoming to this system is an extremely important thing to do well, and dry validation is probably the best Ruby gem to take care of that task. However, dry validation consists of two big parts, one of which, and I think bigger piece, is another gem named dry schema. And the dry validation is a library built on top of it to extend dry schema functionality by a few useful features. In this episode, I want to explicitly tell you about dry schema and explain in what scenarios you could use it as a standalone validation engine. Dry schema is a gem created by Peter Solnitsa around 2019 by extracting it from dry validation and the intention was to make dry validation more extendable by extracting the structure and basic type checks to simplify dry validation source code. You may read about the dry schema origins on the blog post published by the gems creator a few years back already. In this episode, I will mostly focus on covering a few nice features and explaining when dry schema is a perfect choice for validating data structures. Dry Schema is designed only for simple data validations, and because of its amazing performance, it lets you validate every input to your system, not only models just before saving them to the databases. The key goal of this gem is to ensure that data you will work with is safe for being used by your code. It provides two main functionalities, data structure validation and type validation. The list of features is actually stupidly long, but these two points are the main focus of the library. In your application, you might have various types of input, like form parameters, JSON body params, YAML or JSON config files, CSV data collections, or nested get params for filtering purposes. However, in most of Ruby applications, not everything is validated. Over years, I've found that people tend to validate mostly database models to avoid saving records to the database with incorrect field values. But this is way too late to apply validations. If you don't agree, please recall if you have ever experienced an undefined method error for a new class. I did. A lot, actually. This kind of issues can be completely eliminated if more people would make use of gems like Dry Schema, validating and transforming all the input incoming to the system, ensuring they always work with data types they expect. But why we even validate params in the first place? One of the important reasons is of course security. You may experience SQL injection or just hacking to the system by updating the field you want intent to allow. This is why we need strong parameters in Rails, and this is why Dry Schema is used as an improved replacement for strong parameters in Hanami Actions. I have covered this in my previous episodes, feel free to check it out. The second big reason is to avoid unexpected errors caused by invalid data values or formatted in an incorrect way. If you think you do validate your app well, how many of you validate the get params collections to only apply filters for supported queries? Dry Schema allows you to easily validate exactly that. It helps you check if the given data is in expected format, structure, and contains fields of expected types. Additionally, it allows you to coerce some data types in certain elements and do basic transformations when needed to ensure you never get nil when you don't intend to. But best would be show it to you by an example. Let's say I want to validate the name and the age of the input hash. With dry schema, you can define the expected data structure for your validation, defining all the input structure rules. Here I'm going to specify that my name is required, but my age is optional. When I will call it with or without H key, it will return a success. However, for a missing name field, we will get the failure with error messages being filled in 
or missing field. I can add more stuff, like requiring some data to be filled while allowing others to be empty. The code above will allow my age to be nil or a field integer, while my name would always need to be a field string. However, for certain scenarios, my validation would not behave as expected. If I would pass to my web server those params, they will be transformed from JSON string to a hash, but all the values would be strings, not integers. This could be an issue, as we would need to explicitly transform the string values to integer. However, that often does not work well in Ruby. I recommend another great article explicitly about this topic if you want to increase your vast knowledge about Ruby creation methods. Fortunately, Dry Schema allows you to perform simple data questions with no effort and in a secure manner. To do so, just replace the define method with params question type and it will properly recognize all the integers in your schema. The super awesome thing about it is that you can now work with the result of your validation having all the values properly transformed to expected data types. And it's highly recommended to always do so to minimize the situation where our code crashes due to unexpected data types as an input argument. Never more undefined method on new class, never more trying to add two strings instead of integers. What a wonderful time to be alive. However, it's not the end of the awesome features Dry Schema gives you for free. Dry Schema comes with a great collection of built-in predicates logic that allows you to chain multiple simple logic rules. With this, you can create way more strict validations if needed. For example, if I would like to validate all tags in my search query, I could require the tags key, passing a block with a predicate logic inside. I can check if the input is an array, and for each array element, check if it's a string. However, while this is very powerful and extendable, it can lead to a lot of redundant code and may not be very convenient in case of more complex examples. This is why common predicates had been wrapped in macros, simplifying the usage of the gem by a lot. To achieve the same tags array validation, we can replace the block call with a value macro and chain the each macro to it. All the field and maybe keywords were macros too. I strongly recommend visit the documentation for all the built-in macros and how to build your own, because yes, you can build your own macros, wrapping any set of predicates common for your project to make your code more dry. However, this is easier done if you use dry validation. Now, let me go one step further. When you work with multiple files, you probably would like to have your validation objects being defined in separate files, placed in a folder like contracts, schemas, or validators. It's easy to do so too. Just make your class inheriting from the params class, so ensure you change the dot with the double colon and define your schema using the define keyword. Now when I will run this code, I should see the clean error message. Oh, I forgot about passing the key to the validator. Let me fix it very quick. Now it's fine. These error messages can accept local information to return information in different languages, as well as several other options. Again, I encourage you to visit the documentation for more details. You can also extract common parts of your schemas to the reusable classes. For example, if I have the other info schema defined, I can just use it in the user schema and all the nested fields will be properly validated if I will ever want to create a whole user object at once. Now, when I will pass my tags wrapped within the other info key, I will get my validation rules applied to the user validation. It's amazing how it can allow you to organize your code and manage input data validations apart from the business logic. But this is all I have for you in this episode. 
If you want to see more content in this fashion, subscribe to my YouTube channel, newsletter, and follow me on Twitter. In this video, I have only touched basics of using the dry schema. There is way more to learn. A whole advanced section of features with filtering, composing schemas, abstract syntax tree, and more. There are extensions, predicates logic, and types check, which use dry types under the hood. It's a whole world of validation related features, and I honestly love this gem a lot. Dry Schema is, in my opinion, one of the most powerful dry gems out there, and dry validation extends it even more to add business validation on top of it. It's extremely fast, composable, and powerful validation engine, and I strongly recommend to check it out if you haven't yet. Maybe with this gem added to your project, you will start to validate more input data and less bugs will appear in your applications. At the end, by quoting the documentation statement, if you wonder when to use this beauty, the answer is always and everywhere. I want to especially thank my recent sponsors, Selwon.com, Brandon Waiver, and Ascend Loyalty for supporting this project. I really appreciate it. By helping me with monthly GitHub sponsorship to create this content, together we really start making a difference in the open source world. Thank you all for your support. And remember, if you want to support my work even without money involved, the best you can do is to like, share and comment on my episodes and discussion threads, helping add value to the open source community. If you know other great gems you wish me to cover or to talk about, Leave a comment with hashtag suggestion and I will gladly cover them in the future episodes. As usual, here you can find two of my previous videos. Thank you all for watching and supporting my channel. You are awesome and have a nice rest of your day.